Since this is uh, Megan's transition into adulthood, going to college, we're going to miss her. Uh, so we wanted to uh, pray for you, Megan, and wish your best on your journeys as for serving the Lord. And so um, we'll start with Isaac. Father in heaven, I just thank you so much for the awesome privilege of getting to know Megan over the past three years and you know, just watching her uh, grow in you, Father. It's been awesome. And you, know, you uh, have been awesome at work in her life. And I know that uh, wherever she goes, she's going to uh, she's going to give her best. And I know that. And I just pray, Father, that she leaves, that she goes a long distance from home. That you will just uh, be with her. chance to get to know her and see her grow up and see what a talented young lady she is that she is and that she has grown to be and we just ask that you would go with her that you would uh, put people in her path that that she can show your light and the way of life that, that she has learned through the looking into your word Lord and we just thank you for what a bright and beautiful young lady that she to grace our presence, and we just ask that you would go with her, Lord. Jesus, we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Megan's life. We thank you for her family. We ask you to bless her as she goes out into the world, ever protect her and keep her safe, and give her health and give her prosperity. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you so much for uh, Megan's decision to serve you. Lord, we're going to miss her, but we know that uh, you will use her if she just uh, submits to you. And we just ask that as she studies, that um, she will just always remember um, those that uh, has come alongside her and helped her with her growth, and her spiritual growth, and her life, especially for her parents who um, have brought her up and, and taught her. Impromptu 
meeting. Um, camp, I, I think I shared a little bit about camp um, last, last Sunday. I can't remember. It's been a long week. Still not all there. Uh, but camp was good. Camps, both camps were, uh, went really well. And um, let's see, we had, I know we had two baptisms at high school camp. I think I shared that with you guys. Two baptisms, baptisms at high school camp. From high school camp, there were also two people who wanted to be baptized back home. And then at the end of uh, junior high camp, we had two uh, people from Lexington who wanted to be baptized, but wanted to wait until they were coming home too. So we praise God for that. And really in that, we, we have succeeded in our mission at camp. I, I, whether we have one baptism or 15, it doesn't matter to me. Is people made decisions for Christ, and that's what excites me. And camp, I don't know, I feel like, and maybe this is just my perspective, I feel like uh, in a lot of the, this area, camp is not something, unfortunately, that is pushed, and it needs to be. We need to encourage our kids to go to camp. We, as uh, just in our congregation, not, not just our congregation, not all the other churches, I really feel like we need to push, we need to push it hard, because the experiences that these kids have at camp, it's not just going and getting out and you have this awesome experience and you come back. Well, it's, that's part of it, but really it's, it's a time where you can be away from all the influences of the world. You get to, the, the kids get to see that there are a great many, not just their youth group, of their age kids serving Christ, loving God. They get to be in that and surrounded by um, great men and women um, who dedicated their lives to serving these kids, to sharing Christ with these kids, and they get to experience that. And these experiences can and will shape their spiritual growth. Camp is a huge reason why I am in ministry today. And I know that that is very common. Some of you just don't like raising your hand, I know that. But uh, that's, that's where I made a lot of big decisions is to, to follow the Lord um, through camp. And uh, camp is really important because th this is one, one whole time when we get a week of getting away from the world and, and just focusing on God and having all this fellowship. It's like a mountaintop experience. Um, so it's really important that that when we have these camps, that you encourage our young ones to, to make it a high priority. And I think uh, our generation today, parents are not doing that. They're not encouraging their kids. They're kind of letting the kids decide whatever they want to do. I think um, we almost have to kind of demand that they do go to camp. And so uh, I just got back from a, a Ascend the Summit uh, retreat, and uh, last year we was it last year that you gave your report or the year before? Anyways, Emily went to this Ascend the Summit uh, retreat, and man, that was awesome. And uh, it's nice to hear somebody talk about it, but when you're there in person and experiencing uh, the, 
the Colorado Rockies. You guys know what I'm talking about? I, the Rockies have something about it uh, that it really draws you to the Lord. The beauty, the, the trees, you know, living in alliance, you don't see too many of that. Uh, and then uh, I just wanted to share a few pictures with you. Um, the place is called Beaver Creek Resort, and uh, it was just breathtaking to, to see the, the, the pond there and to see all the, the fish jumping out of the water and the geese and the ducks. And, uh, we even got to see a deer on the horse, uh, horse ride and uh, a varmint. And it's just like out in God's country, they call it. Um, when I first got there, uh, I didn't realize what I was going to get into. I thought it was a camping experience, but it was actually a resort. So when I went into the room, this is what I found, a, a first class uh, room. And so I, I had to have a picture of me getting into the room and kind of showing you what this place is like. It's really nice. So it, it's it's uh, a place where anybody can go and take their family. And they've got all kinds of activities over there. They even have... Um, a hill where they do um, tubing in the winter time, and of course when the pond ices up, they have pond hop. So it's a really neat place, and the food is excellent. Uh, we ate so much that well, I'm not gonna talk about that. <laughs> Anyways, uh, this is um, uh, one of the Corel kids that. She ended up being my mentee or the, my teammate for the uh, for the challenge for the what is that called the amazing faith race and uh, it was really exciting. Uh, she celebrated her 17th birthday uh, and she said something about not being able to eat cake or doesn't like cake and the cook actually went out of his way and carved this watermelon uh, saying happy birthday. On that mean? Uh, that's how it was as far as our experience with the staff over there. They just bent over backwards. Um, I remember having pizza the first night, and not only did we have pizza, but they had like four boxes of pizza for us to take to the rooms. Uh, and every night we had so much left over that we had stuff to take to the rooms and uh, had great times of board games and just had uh, fellowship and got to know these kids. Uh, but most important of all is that we were able to share our lives and pour our lives into these kids. Because some of them are really not sure what they want to do with life. But you know, I think by the end of the retreat, these kids had no doubt, no doubt what they wanted to do with their life. And we'd like to encourage more people because it's coming up and we need to start looking among our youth as far as who we're going to nominate next for the Ascend the Summit. And uh, so be thinking about that. Um, had a chance to go horseback riding, and uh, we were kind of getting discouraged because we had a lot of rain. I don't know if you heard of all the rain that was happening over in Colorado. <coughs> Every once in a while, our, all our phones would uh, beep in uh, unison and says the emergency alert that there's going to be flash flooding and all this. Well, we did have a lot of rain, and we were getting kind of discouraged because we thought that the horseback riding was going to get canceled. But you know, the next morning we woke up and we had a positive attitude and we uh, did some fun things uh, indoors. But you know, by the afternoon time it cleared up and we were able to go on our horseback ride. Uh, and that was really neat. Um, I don't really, you know, I remember seeing a lot of western movies where they go through the, the river and everything like that. And I thought that was pretty cool that we were able to she says, you know, you guys wait over here because I'm going to go first and see how deep it is. <laughs> well, I had this workhorse. And this workhorse is so tall that I didn't even get my feet wet. So that was good. <laughs> uh, and then we went on the bus the last day. Uh, it was Thursday morning. We didn't even know if we were able to go on the, uh, the whitewater rafting. But we all got on the bus and then uh, had a great time. We had only one person from another group uh, that fell out. It was kind of exciting to see a, a lady coming, floating down the river, but she got rescued. And, uh, 
and she was okay. And one guy kind of fell out halfway out of the raft and they pulled him back in. Um, then, then they let him go swimming a little bit, and that was fun too. But um, the whole experience was just really exciting. And, um, you know, when I scheduled to go to the Ascender Summit, I didn't realize that it was one week before the Young Life Camp. So being kind of wiped out from that and then having to turn around and go back to Colorado, um, I need your prayers. But I, I was kind of thinking about today's message and what I was going to bring to you today. And I, I was thinking about this idea of giving it all. You know, Ma Megan's made a big step to, to sacrifice. I mean, she's an honor student, and she could probably choose any college that she would like to go to. But she she has decided to, to give her life to the Lord wherever. I know her music talent is what she's kind of like, the reason why I think you're going to Nebraska Christian because they have a good music program. But you know what? She she can go anywhere and get a music degree. But she, I know down deep in her heart, she wants to serve the Lord. She's given it all to Jesus. And I, I, I pray that that is the desire of everybody here is that we don't want to sing the song, uh, give it some, give it some, give it some to Jesus. Right? The song says what? Give it all to Jesus. And I think we, as, as Christians, sometimes we forget what our main purpose in life is. And we tend to want to only give God the leftovers of our life. God wants it all. And we think that by giving only some to Jesus that we're going to have a better life. But you know, when we give it all to Jesus... Jesus is going to just pour it back into you and, and you, He's going to give it to you more than you can handle. That you will be blessed beyond you, whatever you can imagine. And I know that for a fact because I have experienced that. That God will just bless us more than we can... I mean, you know, everybody thinks that a life of a Christian, well not everybody, but a lot of people think that the life of a Christian is kind of boring. But if you are giving it all to Jesus, is it boring? No, it's exciting. It's the most exciting thing that you can ever experience when you give it all to Jesus. And then when I think about what the, uh, the Apostle Peter says, he says, To the elders among you, I appeal as fellow elders and a witness of Christ's suffering, who also will share in the glory to be revealed. He says, Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care, watching over them, not because you must, but because you are willing, as God wants you to be, not pursuing this honest gain, but eager to serve. Not lording it over those entrusted trust you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. And in the same way, you who are younger, submit yourselves to the elders, all of you, clothe yourselves with humil humility, towards one another. God opposes the proud, but He shows favor to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that He may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxieties on Him, because He cares for you. How many of you believe that? That God cares for you. How come you're not raising your hand? <laughs> you don't believe that? Huh? See, I told you there's some people that just don't like to raise their hand because I know they, they believe that. But God cares for us and, and no matter what we go through, sometimes we feel like we're abandoned, but we have to always remember that God is always with us. And if we feel that God is not near us, that's our own fault. Because He promised in His Word, if you believe in God's Word, I will never leave you or forsake you. How many of you believe that? Huh? And sometimes we tend to say, God, where are you? And, and you know, we go through our troubles in life, and we say, God, where are you? Why are you allowing me to go through all this stuff? And we all have those things, right? All our struggles. Sometimes it seems like never-ending struggles. Maybe it might be hell. Maybe it might be spiritual warfare. 
But you know what? That's what we are promised, right? God promised us that we're going to have suffering. Christ suffered, and especially if we're serving the Lord, we are going to get suffering. And as we look at what's happening to our country today and the moral breakdown, guess what? More suffering is going to come. But the thing is that we know that God is near. And as long as we give it all to Jesus, He's going to take care of us. And so He wants us to cast our cares on Him. And when we put our lives totally in His hands, guess what? No matter what you go through, you can say like the Apostle Paul says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. And that wasn't the first time in that chapter he said that. It's a repetitive thing that he's saying, Be full of joy. And being full of joy means you know what the outcome that you know that eventually, where are you going to end up? You're going to be with the Lord in person forever where you can actually see Him. Yes, sometimes it's hard for us to understand this whole concept of, of the Holy Spirit living within us. Maybe it's because we don't exercise or practice or understand. That when we give our lives to the Lord, we have the Holy Spirit living within us. And maybe it's because we don't get in the Word enough to understand that God is always with us. And we have the power of God to do whatever He called us to do. Right? God has called each and every one of you to serve Him in some kind of compa capacity, and we have all the power in the world to do what He wants us to do. Why do we doubt? That's because we are giving Him all to Jesus. We're not casting our cares upon Him. In Philippians, again, rejoice the Lord always. I say again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious for anything, but in everything, every situation, by prayer and petition, let your requests be known to God. Wait a minute. I thought God knew everything. Why should we present our requests to God? You know why? Because God wants you to talk to Him. God wants fellowship. He wants a relationship with you. He wants you to be dependent upon Him and by praying and requesting for Him to guide you and to allow you to serve Him. Then you will understand that He's there. I remember going to camp one time and they, they, they told me to they told us to cup our hands, and I, I think I've mentioned this before, but just to cup our hands. And they said, just make, make it like Jesus got his hands like this under yours. Let's do this. Everybody who feel like it, just hold your hands like that. Can't close your eyes. And, and, and Jesus' hands is right under yours. And they said, you know, all that stuff that you're dealing with, maybe it'd be health problems, maybe it'd be um, family quarrels or whatever your troubles are, you just put all that in your hands. And, and Jesus' hands is right cupped right underneath. Now, just open up your hand and just pour that, all that stuff into Jesus' hands. You see, and that's what it is like, is that when we cast our burdens and our cares upon Him, He wants to take those because you know what? He can handle it. He's God. And He's going to help you through every situation that you go through. And the peace of God. <coughs> you understand that? The peace of God. What better peace is there 
that God's peace will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. It says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, and whatever is admirable. If anything, if anything is excellent or worthy of praise, think about such things. You know, so many times in our life that we dwell on the negative or we will feed ourselves with negativity, especially when we watch TV, right? Or when we hang around with the wrong people and we hear all this negativity or we get on Facebook and we see all this negativity, that's what we're going to think about. So how in the world are we going to think about what is good? That means we've got to get in God's Word, right? And, and because God's Word is good, God's Word is Jesus in written form wanting us to become more like Him. And the more we read His Word, the more we're going to become like Him. And the more we're going to think about what is good, what is admirable. And you know what happens? Is when we allow the Word of God to be a part of our lives, guess what's going to happen? We're going to shine, right? We're going to be good examples to everyone around us. If we want this world to change, we as Christians got to shine for Jesus. What have you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me? The Apostle Paul says, what you see in me, my example that I've given to you, put this into practice. Let me ask you a question. How many of you can say the same thing? How many of you can say, what I am doing, how I'm living my life, I want you to emulate me, copy what I do. Follow me. Be like me. And you know what? Paul wasn't being proud here, but he knew who he was in Jesus. And every single one of us should say, be able to say, you know what? Come follow me. Be like I am. And the God of peace will be with you. You see, if we are in Christ, nothing the Apostle Paul says, nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. Right? Nothing. And so, if nothing can separate us from Him, then we can have this peace no matter what's happening in this world today. I, I, I just heard from uh, an email that I get from the Family Council up in Rapid City, and they're saying that now they are targeting churches whose preachers preach something negative and they're going to think and consider about taking away their tax-exempt status. Ooh, scary! You know what? I'm just going to keep on preaching no matter what. I'm going to preach what God wants me to preach because I fear God more than I fear man. But you know, there's a lot of preachers out there who fear man more than they fear how about us as a congregation? Are we willing to stand up no matter what happens, what the government says that we can or cannot do? Are we going to do what is right? That is what is important. And you know what? No matter what kind of persecution we will face, the God of peace will transcend everything that we understand. Matthew, Jesus himself, come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. A yoke. What's that? Not a yoke, right? <laughs> Be partners with Jesus. Be connected with Jesus. And let him guide you each step of Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Why is our burden light if we are yoked with Jesus? You know why? 
Because he's doing all the work through us. I can do all things through Christ. To Christ who gives me strength. The trouble is that we tend to do things in our own might, in our own strength. Instead of letting God be our strength. You see, God wants to use our weakness so that His power might be glorified and seen through us. Matthew 6. He says, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life or what you will eat or drink or about your body. What you will wear. I you know, ah, Lord, I need a new outfit. But guys don't say that too much, but I know. Well, guys, you do buy it. Maybe sometimes you're just as bad as women. <laughs> but don't worry about those things, right? It's not bad to have those things, but don't worry about them. Is life not more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. Right there at the camp. An eagle flying right over. Look at the birds. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than them? Can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about the clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor. Spin, and yet I tell you, not even Solomon, King Solomon, in all his splendor, was dressed like one of these. And if that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and gone tomorrow, is thrown into the fire, and not much more, will he not much more clothe you? You of little faith. So do not worry saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For your heavenly Father knows. Do you trust in Him? Do you think He knows? Yes, He knows that you need them. If you have faith, little faith, you can know. God can provide, God, Jehovah Jireh, will provide your every need. I didn't say wants, I said needs, what you need. See, sometimes we desire things in life, and we think, and you know what happens when we desire something that God doesn't want us to have? We, we think that God wants us to have it, right? And so we pray, we pray, God, give me this, God, give me this, please give me this. And what? We find out, and then we say, God doesn't answer prayer. Why? Because we ask with wrong motives, maybe? Or we ask for something that God knows that is bad for us? But see, first, His kingdom and His righteousness. And all these things, all these things will be added to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. And you know what? That is so true. And, and sometimes we forget that if we don't seek first His kingdom, His righteousness, then all our parties are all messed up. I'd like to sing together. We don't need the words because all you know is the words of the song. Yeah. 
GQ first, give you the number one position in our lives. Not, not to get all the goodies, but just because that's the right thing to do. In Jesus' name.
She said, probably meet at McDonald's, where I was like, you good art. Which, I haven't talked to that.
use some clamps to hold the springs together. Yeah. But then the second side we did, we did it in about three minutes. Cool. That's not too bad. And then he's been putting the lift kit on his truck <laughs> while I've been gone. He had to flatten the tires to get it out of the garage. Oh. <laughs> it barely fit in there as it was. But he's putting the, doing the back of the garage. Ha, ha, ha. 